I need new lights. At first, I wasn't sure how to start off this video, because I realize I talk a lot in my videos. Maybe that's necessary at times to explain a technical detail, for example. But in this video, I think we can jump straight into it. Suffice to say, if you have an old computer lying around with a parallel port, you could have one of these in disguise. Now it should be obvious that this bigger brother did a lot of computational stuff before this was even popular. With a simple USB with some um, software on it, we can boot off this, jump right into the software, and start controlling something straight from the I.O. ports from the parallel port. Now I couldn't find a button to connect to this motherboard, so I'm going to have to turn on this motherboard with the screwdriver. Wait, that's not how that works. So all you will need is Rufus and the latest version of Quick Basic. So that will be in the description uh, below. You open up Rufus. You should get a window like this. Make sure that your um, USB drive is selected. And make sure that free DOS is selected. And you're ready to go. So once Rufus is done, you can go into your USB drive, you should see these files, and then open up your Quick Basic folder, go into it, and just copy all of these folders straight into the USB drive. And you're done. Now you can insert your USB and boot into FreeDOS and load Quick Basic. Once you're booted up, you can navigate the file systems with DIR, short for directory, and CD, short for change directory. Navigate to the bin folder, and once there, simply type QBX, and you will load up the Quick Basic development environment. Now, to start using that program to control actual things, you first need to make a sacrifice to the parallel port gods. Out of everything that has to be done to make this work, this is the hardest and longest thing you will be doing, just because you need to prepare the wires and find the ones you need. The wires we are looking for are the eight data lines in the parallel port. That would be pins two through nine as listed on the cable itself. I use this simple setup. With my multimeter on its continuity setting, I connect it to one of the pins via a breadboard wire and then check all the exposed wires on the other end until my multimeter beeps. Now that we got our eight data lines assembled, we can control something with them. As an example, I prepared eight LEDs to start off with. So we have the positive sides uh, of the LEDs connected over to the data lines. Now for the negative side, we just have to connect all of these leads in parallel and connect that to this negative shielding um, uh, cable that we twisted together. Alright, so how this works is you select an output, then you select an address, 888 corresponds to the parallel port we are using, 
and then you choose a number from 0 to 255. That number changes how the LEDs light up. Also, 255 relates to those eight data lines. So I'm going to start off with 0. That turns off all of them. Then I'm going to start off with 1. That turns on the first one. Then 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, which doesn't light up because I, I think that data line is broken or something. I checked the LED. LED works fine. The cable, cable is fine. Uh, so the connection is there, but I, I guess something on the motherboard is broken, so that doesn't light up. Um, and then the last one, 128, lights up the last one. There you go. Those are your eight data pins, and uh, consequently eight data LEDs. If you are having problems with this setup, it would be a good idea to check your BIOS settings just in case. You can often customize parallel port configurations in there. This is where it gets interesting. With some simple coding, you can make these eight LEDs count. And so now, what that program does is count um, all the way up from zero to 255, and each time it counts per second, you can see um, that visually. This is a computer in real time counting to 255. Other than counting, it can do other things like beep. Do you want more beeps? No problem. Do you want it to play a soothing song for you? No problem. You can also adjust the frequency and duration of the sounds you produce, turning you into an instant DJ. Wait for the drop. Wait for it. You might be wondering if this can control a stepper motor, and yes, yes it can, but my code is inefficient, and that's why it's going so slow. To control a stepper motor, you need to do a few things. I had to wire these six wires into a four-wire configuration, then I'm using the L298N motor controller and hooking that up to the four data lines. I then did some coding to bind specific keys to any of the four outputs. I tested those keys, figured out the correct sequence those keys needed to be pressed in to rotate the stepper in a single direction, and wrote more code around that information to control the stepper. Since it's going a little slow, maybe we can try changing the delay. So instead of a one second delay, we can have a tenth of a second delay. Actually, that's just me holding down a button. QBasic doesn't like decimals for some reason. So how else are we going to change the delay? We can't use decimals. Wait a minute.
Well, maybe you'll wake up the baby or have the dog start barking at you, but at least you'll have a motor turning, right? If you're more of a graphics guy or gal, there is a lot of options. You can even program your own games from scratch. These are more advanced coding-wise, but I'll give you guys some useful links I used when coding. So whether it be motors, graphics, or bits of data, QBasic and the Parallel Port have a lot to offer to educate someone about electronics. While everyone recommends microcontrollers, you can gain a deeper understanding by programming this route, as the software is basic and intuitive enough for beginners, and also holds a lot of interesting options for advanced users. If you liked this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Great, now how do I turn this thing off? Hmm.